What is going on guys, you can start right here from coronavirus headquarters doing exactly the same thing as you may be doing right now, hunkering down at the house, spending time with the family, trying to stay safe, out of trouble. And I hope you guys are doing okay, please stay home. And that's how this virus is actually gonna go away at some point. Now, we're not gonna be talking about the coronavirus, but instead we're gonna be talking about this piece of equipment that I have in my hand. This is the Fuji X100V. This is the fifth generation of the Fuji X100. And this is a camera that I've been trying to get for many years since the very first one was announced. Now, at that time, that camera actually looked a little bit limiting, but today this is the camera that I must own. So I wanna tell you all the reasons why I like this camera, the things that I don't like about the camera. We're gonna talk about specs and so on. So why don't we get started right after the intro? And my name is Gaston. Until the last time I check, I do gear reviews, tutorials, and behind the scenes. So if you like all the stuff that I have laying around in my channel, which is kind of like not that old, consider subscribing to my channel. That's gonna support me and hitting the notification button. So every time a video goes up, you get the little in the phone. That means that I upload a new video and we'll really appreciate that. And I wanna start by telling you how much this camera is because everyone wants to know how much it costs. Well, this camera goes for $1,400. Yes, it's kind of like on the pricer side of uh, uh, cameras, especially for being an APS-C camera, $1,400. But think about this, you know, it's the camera and the lens. And also this camera packs incredible photography feature, but also incredible video feature. So I wanna talk about some of the video features because they are actually pretty incredible for how tiny and how compact the system is. This camera is going to allow you to shoot UHD uh, DCI 4K video recording up to 30 frames per second. Also full frame, it's going to allow you to do up to 120 frames per second, so you're gonna get a buttery smooth uh, slow motion with this camera. Now, let's talk about the sensor because it has a lot to do with how well the video features are in this camera. It is a 26.1 megapixel APS-C sensor, extra and four CMOS sensor. Now, this particular sensor has a very uh, fast read of the sensor. Now, this is going to be ideal when actually using the camera for video, especially when tracking fast moving subject or actually filming moving subjects or panning you know, panning around uh, with the camera and silently. Now, you're not gonna get that nasty rolling shot or that wobble that you get on vertical lines and vertical objects. So this camera actually does it pretty good and I'm pretty amazed to see the quality of the video when actually, you know, avoiding rolling shot or tracking something fast. Being so compact, you know, this could also make an everyday video camera, especially if you uh, have one of those small gimbals like the, uh, what is that, the running, uh, the running, uh, the, um now this camera is also going to be a great option if you really wanna shoot B-roll and stuff like that on a tiny gimbal. This camera is going to allow you. Now, look at the profile of this camera. You're not gonna get forward uh, counterbalance in this situation. It's pretty actually, pretty balanced across all axes. So this is going to be a great camera for a tiny uh, gimbal. Now, the limited video recording is actually because this camera is weather sealed. So there's not a lot of room for the, uh, for the heat to escape in this camera. And it also, heats up when shooting photography. So that's one of the things that I noticed. If you start like fiddling around with menus, focusing and, and starting using the camera hardcore, you're gonna notice a little bit of heat in this area right here. But again, it's nothing that's gonna burn your hands or anything like that. But So this is not going to be a replacement for a full video rig, but this is going to be a hybrid camera that is going to get you out of most situations with great, great feature in both departments. All right, so now I wanna talk a little bit about this lens because it kind of looks like the other one and it kind of is. It's a 23 millimeter F2, but this lens has been redesigned from the ground up. Now, one of the things that I noticed when I rented back then the uh, the uh, X100F was that the image was a little bit soft around the corners and the edges. Now, with this one, I can see how the new design actually have impacted image quality because it's very, very sharp all across the frame. So that's one of the things that I noticed at a glance and without getting so complicated what went on in the design of this lens. Now, why don't we actually talk about some of the features of this um, lens and also wanna show you a little bit of the mod that I actually did on this camera. So, okay, so the camera comes just like you can see right here. Uh, like I mentioned before, you know, it's stuck to the frame. And one of the things very noticeable here is this aperture ring that you have right here. No, it has 
plenty of friction so you're not gonna bump this aperture ring and also to operate it you can only hold it from these two tabs right here which is something that I really like because cameras with aperture rings usually I get to bump them all the time and really uh, changing my settings involuntarily so in this camera you actually have to mean to want to change the aperture ring to really do it now there is a little threading component right here and let me show you actually let me show you how this cap is um, this cap actually pushes it by friction and the friction is applied right in this knurling right here so there's no locking system so I don't know how much I trust this cap so because of that I want to show what I did so this little um, ring right here actually comes off so you just unscrew it like this and uh, the reason why this is like this is because you can actually uh, put an adapter that's going to allow you to convert your focal length to be even wider or actually to extend it now So let me show you what I actually got from Fuji. This is actually a lens hood adapter with a lens hood extender so Two pieces now if this is too much for you You can actually roll out with this and this thing has like three tabs right there that you can uh, Mount more things. I'm, I'm assuming that you can probably mount an ND filter even though this camera actually has a four stop built-in ND filter but um, this is how I actually rock my camera when I'm outside and you know I don't put this this cap because it's kind of like cumbersome so having this lens hood or other aftermarket option is something that I would suggest that you get because you're gonna get a lot of flaring when shooting in front of uh, you know front list situations and uh, that's the problem that I encounter when I first started using this camera you know look how tiny and flat this is there's nothing actually protecting the um, uh, the lens I mean just a tiny indentation right there so now this camera can shoot up to 11 frames per second when shooting with the mechanical shutter but also 20 frames per second when shooting with the electronic shutter so pretty incredible for this tiny little piece of camera all right so why don't we actually talk about the hybrid viewfinder now this camera allows you to change from optical viewfinder to electronic viewfinder so you can actually have both and actually choose the type of experience you want to have every time you shoot with this camera so to do so is very very simple you have to actually put the camera in your eye and you see that lever right here you just flick it like that and it's going to change from electronic to um, optical mechanical viewfinder now you do have to have your eye over here because if you don't let me show you right here overhead like if I do this if I do this nothing is going to happen and the moment you block that sensor that's in the back now it does and now the fun thing about this is you can actually see a lot of the information from the electronic viewfinder overlay in the optical viewfinder so you know if you're in the mood for that retro experience this camera can deliver or if you're lazy and you just want the electronic you can also have it so next up we're gonna talk about the body and its ergonomics dials and so on so right over here we have a hot shoe mount you know to install your flash or your uh, remote trigger and this is one of the nice features that Fuji has all right now let's talk about this dial that we have right here so this is a very once again very old school dial it allows you to change your uh, shutter speed like so it goes from one to four thousand but also if you put it in t mode you can actually assign the uh the shutter uh, to be controlled by this little button right here now all the dials are actually pushed in as well so you can actually scroll around the menus for example and confirm by pushing in and the same thing with the one in the front um, and this is the way that i use it all the time you know t and i really control my shutter speed from this back dial right here now when it comes to the ISO, you can also opt for using the retro experience by simply pulling up and unlike the other version, this one stays up, whereas the other one you have to hold up and rotate, it was a little bit cumbersome. Now this one, stay up until you are confirming your, your exposure, your ISO, have it right there in 6400 and then you pop it right down and uh, you set your ISO, but also you can actually choose C and it would assign the ISO to this front dial and this is the way I have it you also have automatic mode and the shutter speed you also have the bolt mode which is B right there now on this side we're gonna find a very standard exposure compensation dial it has pretty good resistance it doesn't have any locking system but I haven't bumped it once so that's pretty good now right over here you have the shutter release and I have installed this little button right here because remember this shutter release it's actually one of the old school ones where you can install like a like a cable shutter release you know you throw it right there and you can remotely trigger it so i don't use that so i use this little um thing to cover it and it gives me 
like an nice feel every time I push that button right there. Um, also, you have the on and off uh, dial right here. You know, I really appreciate when cameras do that and put everything in one side. Uh, not like some cameras that sometimes have it right there, the on and off like Canon, for example. And that's it. Now we have a, a button right here that could be assigned to a function. Now let's turn the camera on its back and show you a little bit more of this side. Right over here, we have another button, the drive delete button, auto exposure lock and auto focus lock right here. Now these two buttons can also be configured to anything you want. So right over here, you have the Q menu button that overlays a bunch of options. You have the menu button right here, you know, the play button to review your photos and the display back right here. Now. This camera, well, you're gonna notice that we don't have that D-pack that we had in prior versions. Now, this one is pretty clean. And actually, I really like it because, check this out, this camera is really kind of hard to hold. And having a D-pack right here and really stretching your fingers this much is like a, it's like a problem bound to happen. So I really appreciate the fact that they have removed it and now they put this little joystick right here that is actually very, very responsive. So I, you know, I'm pretty, pretty glad that they have removed that D-pad because I remember being so cumbersome. There's no much leverage right here to hold the camera and that could, could actually be a problem. This is the reason why I have installed this little bothering triangles right here because I put a wrist strap all the time when I shoot with this camera because you're gonna need one. You are going to drop this camera if you don't do so. We have a swivel screen, which is very, very handy. Um, this is going to be great for shooting down low like that. And also you can actually sh uh, flip it in the other direction to shoot overhead. So really good feature to be added now. I wish the screen also flipped like that and kind of rotated kind of like the X-T4 that I've seen in a video. That would have been so good to have it, but I mean, better have something that have nothing. So another great feature about this camera is that you have a touch screen capability. However, the touch screen capability doesn't let you navigate through the menus with your finger. It's only reduced to actually a couple of functions such as uh, selecting focus, you know, poking focus in your camera. Now the touch to focus feature is, it's a good implementation, but it doesn't work very, very well. It's very, very laggy, um, very slow. So I really got really frustrated trying to use it. It just doesn't respond very, very well. I don't know if it's my camera or what. So I ended up using always the joystick to navigate and it's way much faster than actually being struggling with the, um, with a touch to focus. Now going to this side of the camera, we're gonna find the switch to change the different focusing mode. We have single, continuous, and manual, and to change it is very, very simple. I really like the location of the switch because you don't have to go through menu to do it. You just simply toggle the switch up and down and you can actually navigate through the options really, really quick. Now let's flip the camera on this other side. We're gonna open that door compartment, and the first thing that we're gonna notice is this little tiny hole right here. That is actually the microphone or shutter release, electronic shutter release option. This is a 2.5 millimeter, so if you're gonna use a microphone, you're gonna have to use an adapter. And if you use an adapter, you're gonna have a protrusion like that long coming out of that little adapter. So I don't know why they haven't gone with a 3.5 millimeter uh, microphone adapter. As a matter of fact, I don't have any microphone that fits here, nor I'm actually willing to stick a uh, an adapter right there. Now, you can also use a USB microphone if you would want or something like that because it has a USB input. You can charge the camera through here as well. And you have a mini HDMI port right here. Now, if you look at the separation between the ports, they are like two stuck together. And this is gonna be a problem because you're not gonna be able to charge the camera while having an HDMI recording. Now, that is a bummer because it would have been really nice being able to actually charge the camera while having an HDMI cable connected uh, to either record or project on a TV or something like that. So I don't know why Fuji did it like that, probably because, you know, lack of space right here. But if you actually look inside this area, I mean, it seems to be a little bit of space right there, uh, but probably there is a component, so who knows. And now going to the bottom of the camera, we're gonna find our battery and our screw mount right here. And the battery is located in this place. Um, also, you have your, your SD card slot right next to the battery. Now, the battery that we're using right here, this is an MPW126. This one is the S, so you can actually use the prior battery from other versions. Now, this one is supposed to last a little bit longer. It's kind of like a new version of the battery. 
Now with this battery, you're gonna be able to shoot about 350 pictures when using the electronic viewfinder and up to 420 pictures when using the optical viewfinder. Now, this is an improvement from the prior version, not a substantial improvement, but the battery seems to last a lot more than before. Now there are several ways to trigger your film simulation, either using the menu, a custom button, or in this case, by simply swiping from right to left like that, and you're gonna get your menu popped right there. Now, also, there are several ways to navigate this menu. You can use the joystick, you can use the uh, back dial, or you can simply use your fingers to navigate. So what are some of the options that we have right here? We have the standard Provia, we have the Velvia, we have the Astia, we have the Classic Chrome, one of my favorite ones. You have the Pro Negative High, you have the uh, Pro Negative Standard, uh, Classic Negative, Eternal Cinema, which this one is a very flat profile, great for shooting videos or to shoot pictures that you wanna grade after uh, if you're gonna shoot with JPEGs. And the A-Cross, which is a black and white, and the monochrome standard. Now, you also have a sepia mode, which is my least favorite one, but it's there in case you like. Now, if you decide to shoot JPEG fine, which actually is really great quality and probably one of the best JPEG out of all cameras that I've tried, you also have great grading tools right here so you can bake in a color grading on your JPEGs and just upload into the internet or deliver it to your client. So let me show you how to do that. Now to trigger the grading tools is very simple. You're gonna hit the menu button or you can assign a custom function. Now right under the film simulation and notice something right here, I have a monochrome, so it's a black and white. Uh, if you have a black and white selected, you're gonna get an additional grading option that is going to allow you to change you know, the color range of your black and gray. Now if you have it in, let's say another mode, for example, as the soft, you know, it turns off because it only works in, it's a, it's a monochromatic option. Now, you also have grain effect that you can turn on and off and also set it to weak or strong. And you can also set the size of the grain to uh, small or large. Uh, you also have a color chrome effect. You can turn it on and off. And again, you have a weak or stronger for more or less contrast. And the color chrome effects blue, weak or strong, you know, to add a little bit more saturation. So this is the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching. If you own an X100, let me know what you think. Drop your comments down below. And please stay away from this coronavirus. We're gonna beat this, but we must stay home. We gotta minimize the risk, guys. So thank you, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button, and until then, see you later.